Okay. Hello, Dr. Smith. How are you? Hi, Douglas. Great to meet you. Great to meet you, too. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you with us. Today we're going to be talking about head injury and um, Q collar, which you had mentioned just before we got on. Now, is this your invention, the Q collar? Ah, yes, it is. Uh, 14 years of my life, I diverted away from my medical practice to chase after this dream, and uh, it launched about a year ago. Okay, I see a lot of pictures of football players behind you. Can you hold up the Q collar that you've got there? Yeah, sure. Um, this is my personal one. It has a yellow sleeve. Um, this is my wife's purple sleeve. Uh, that's basically what it looks like. Uh, what's that made out of? Is it foam or is it hard or soft? Or? So it's a mixed polymer. Uh, we just partnered with the military. So now it is flam uh, inflammable, so it can't ignite. So there's a number of different ways that we skin that cat. The inside has a memory metal to it so that when it inserts over your neck, it lands exactly above the jugulars, which we'll talk about why that is. Um, and it gives the exact same force no matter how many times you open and close it over and over. So that is to do what? To protect your spinal cord, to protect your neck? No, but that's a great question. So I was literally at the Army Research Lab presenting on a completely different topic when somebody came up afterwards and said, geez, I wish clever people would try to figure out traumatic brain injury. We've hardly moved the needle after $100 billion of research. Well, about six months later, I had already started looking into all these highly uh, G-force tolerant creatures in the forest and had found that all of us mammals that have a spine have actually got omohyoid muscles in our neck which collapse our jugular every single time we yawn. So when we raise our arms up over our heads in this manner, the jugulars collapse and it diverts blood flow into a different part of the brain and the brain just fills up like an airbag and the brain can't move. And that's how nature figured out how to allow head ramming sheep to smack their heads at 500 Gs. Woodpeckers smack their heads into trees 80 million times in their lifespan, and they smack at 1200 Gs, which is 10 times what you and I get a brain injury from. So I knew there was an answer, and we just had to try to figure out how nature had done it, and now we have. Well, that's amazing. Um, you had mentioned the NFL playoffs. Uh, tell me about that again. So we've had a lot of adoption in just a year of use here in the United States. Uh, we have about 40 NFL players. Uh, thousands of collegiate and high school players are using the Q collar right now. Uh, we also have been endorsed by the likes of the Premier Lacrosse League. Uh, believe it or not, the um, uh, Skeleton and uh, Bobsled International Committee just endorsed us as well. So this was really coming to a head when on Monday at the big wild card NFL game on Monday Night Football, when the, the Cowboys were taking on Tampa Bay, we had three cue callers out there on the field. It was pretty fun to watch. It's just like a dad watching his kid out there on the game the first time. So you don't get a, a rush of blood to your head with that thing on? No, it's actually very gentle too. So if I could convince you to look down on the back of your hand and just take your finger and gently compress one of the veins that you feel on the back of your hand, that's 30 millimeters of mercury that is required to compress that vessel. Well, the column of fluid that's keeping that open is underneath your jugulars. So one tenth of the amount of pressure that you're putting on the back of your hand is all that's required to divert this tiny amount of blood flow over to a different part of the brain, and it enables all of these wonderful things to occur. And before you freak out too much, remember, we are mimicking exactly what a yawn is. So if you fear putting this collar on, for goodness sakes, don't ever yawn again the rest of your life. <laughs> and then make it even drive it home even further, when you lie down, all the blood in your body moves up into the cranial space. That's greater amount of pre pressure and volume than our cue collar exerts. But see, you can't lie down when you're out there playing football or out there on a military field, and you can't go around yawning all day long either. Somebody is going to make you go home. So we needed to affect this physiological state that nature's been perfecting for millions of years 
we now have been able to give that to our war fighters and our sports and professional athletes. Do you know who Terry Sawchuk was? Oh, I know that name. Give me some more context. He was a hockey player back in the 1950s, early 60s, played in Canada. Uh, back in those days, hockey players wore basically no protection, except for they didn't wear helmets, they didn't wear pads. As time went on, they started to wear helmets and protective gear. Has the Q collar uh, infiltrated into the NHL at all? Absolutely. There, there are a number of different uh, National Hockey League players um, and collegiate level, uh, you name it. It absolutely does. The reason I brought up Terry Sajak because he was famous for, I think it was a Time Magazine picture where his face, I mean, it looked like it had been through a meat grinder. And that's really because he'd been hit so many times in the head with pucks. Uh, and it's a very famous picture if you ever get a chance to look it up. So when we started talking about head injury, immediately he came to mind. Well, interestingly enough, uh, we have some pretty impressive uh, research partners, um, the likes of Cincinnati Children's University of Cincinnati, as well as Harvard Mayo Clinic, University of Toronto. Our first clinical trial was in ice hockey. So this is absolutely in the wheelhouse of what this technology is able to afford. And I will also say that you know we're the first and only FDA authorized device to be able to make claims that we prevent brain injury. And helmets uh, do exactly what they're supposed to do. They, they prevent you from having a skull fracture and they prevent you from getting your eye gouged out, but they're very limited in what they can do in preventing the movement of the brain inside the cranial space. So if you look at our FDA studies, and there were 25 of them that were done, you know we were able to demonstrate in animals an 83% reduction in brain injury. That, that's in a space where no one's been able to show any reduction in brain injury. So we're pretty excited. And when the uh, FDA actually made their press release on this device, we got 350 million social media hits in 48 hours. Wow. This, this is a big deal. <laughs> that this is, is a big deal. Yeah, big deal. that's huge. Um, is this, you've pitched this obviously to the NFL. They should make this just standard issue equipment at this point, right? Well, we sure believe that to be the case. I was really sad to see that on that game on Monday, Russell Gage had a traumatic brain injury a couple weeks back. Tua had had a, a quarterback had a pretty significant brain injury. And I'm not saying that the Q collar can prevent them all. That's just not possible for any technology to do so. But it dramatically reduces the amount of energy that's absorbed by your brain. You know, think about what the National Highway Transit Authority said about airbags and seatbelts. They said it blocks 80% of brain injury. And that's exactly what we found in our animal studies when we also restrain the brain movement just like a seatbelt or airbag restrains your movement inside of a car. How comfortable is that to wear? Well, remember when I asked you to just gently press on the back of your hand, you'll find that that's of no concern to you at all. And it's actually a tenth of that. There is a little more compression than what's involved on compressing the vein because we wanted this to all be contained so that when it goes on, it stays on. And when it gets grabbed, it'll pull off on a football field. But there is a little bit more pressure on these than there would be to just merely compress the vein. Most people will feel the facial vein flush a little tiny bit. But at least in my experience, as well as the hundreds and hundreds of athletes that I've worked with, I would say that uh, less than 2% of people are bothered by it after one day's of use. I certainly can see the need for this uh, and the appeal for this in hockey, in football. I don't know, I guess there could be other sports as well that could use it. Yep, um, the, all the downhill skiing, all the motocross, any racing scenarios, uh, the uh, NASCAR has already been trialing this. Um, the thing that's really been fascinating for me is it actually blocks the in energy entering into your inner ear when you fire a weapon or loud noises. So you could go to a concert now that normally you come back and you've even got a headache and ringing in your ears, that's gone. 
you you don't have that energy being absorbed by the inner parts of your ear. And the VA's number one cost in the veter uh, Veterans Administration is hearing aids. So we believe we're blocking that now. Um, we actually had 30 SWAT officers here in Cincinnati, Ohio, blow up a condemned bank. Half of them had collars on, half did not. We did tensor MRIs, very sophisticated method of determining brain injury. And we were able to demonstrate a dramatic reduction in brain injury if you had the collar on when IED forces were being exploded near, nearby. It really is spectacular. That is spectacular. How many of these have you sold? Well, we're in thousands. We're in the thousands. You have to understand it, we just launched uh, and that had to do with the FDA gave us the OK at the kind of the mid year in 2021. But then they turned around and wanted to see every word that we were speaking out there and and explaining it to people. So we didn't really get this off and running until the first quarter of 2022. So here we're not even one season over in football and we have, I, I don't, I shouldn't say this, but I think it's three to 5,000 of them that have been sold. Uh, can you give us an idea of the cost? What do these cost? Yeah, they're $200. Um, the, uh, the website is the qcollar.com. You can also access a way of purchasing through my personal website, which is davidsmithmd.com. And I can, and that site will direct you over. Uh, the website is mostly promoting the, the new book that I have coming out in February. Okay, so very quickly, we just got about one minute. The book is called About When Heads Come Together. And this is basically what we've been talking about, the Q collar and. That's correct. It's discovering nature's secrets for how she has avoided brain injury in all of her creatures. So again, there, it makes a lot of sense for us humans to try to figure out things. But if we can turn to nature first, that, that's been my mantra as far as finding discoveries and trying to mimic what nature has been able to afford us. Okay, how long has the book been out? Uh, the book comes out in 30 days. So it's not out yet, but it will be uh, hopefully be available for a downloadable format in the next two weeks. Uh, okay, so mid-February it should be out? We hope it should be where all books, anywhere books are sold, it'll be available. And that should be mid-February. Go to the website, you might be able to get an early download within the next week or so. Okay, great. Well, Dr. Smith, thank you so much for coming on. We got to wind this up. Uh, best of luck with this. This sounds amazing. And uh, best of luck to continued success. Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. Appreciate the time.